Today, I wanna to show you one of my favorite classical guitars currently on the market today that blends classical guitar design with some modern elements. It is the Cordoba C12 Spruce Top. I'll tell you all about it, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit the link below and learn how to become an Alamo Music Insider. So today we are talking about Cordoba's C12. Now, the C12 is part of the Luthier line. It's actually one of my favorites in their lineup because I think it blends a lot of very important features. It blends affordability, classical guitar design, and some really innovative, more modern features. Now, when I say modern, some of the features I'm going to talk about today are you know things that came about in the 1970s. And that might not sound very modern if we're talking about flat top acoustic guitar design for like a steel string guitar, but for classical guitars, most of the design elements kind of came into you know their own hundreds of years ago. Now there have been a number of design changes over the years and different builders doing different things on classical guitars. We'll talk about some of those in relation to what this guitar has that makes it a bit unique in the marketplace and something that you should know. But all in all, Classical guitars are really classical. They really are instruments that have kind of been what they've been for at least 150 years from most manufacturers. What makes the Cordoba C12 unique is that you're getting a solid wood classical guitar, uh, really a fine instrument at an affordable price, all things being considered, um, with some very, very unique uh, elements that most classical guitars from manufacturers that are being built in, in factories throughout the world do not have these features available on any models. So let's talk about it. First of all, this is the spruce top version. This C12 is available as a rosewood, East Indian rosewood back and side with a cedar top, or this one, East Indian rosewood back and side with a spruce top. Now we've done this videos on this before, but it's been a long time. So it's time to talk about the Luthier series again, because what you get from Cordoba in any of the Luthier series, any whether it's a C9, a C10, a GK Studio, or GK Pro rather, uh, a C12, is you're getting all solid wood construction. In this case, for under two thousand dollars, and really some fine appointments. So with this, the uh, the top and the back and sides are complemented with this beautiful pale maple binding and this back strip of flamed maple, which is stunning. Uh, you get a mahogany neck with a Spanish heel. You get your typical slotted headstock with an ebony overlay, beautiful gold and ebony tuners with a 14 to one uh, ratio. Ebony fingerboard and bridge. The rosette is, I believe the De Esto uh, pattern, which is uh, patterned after a classical builder's uh, rosette design from many, many years ago. What's going on under the hood, under the top is really what's interesting and also on the neck. So the thing that you can see here is the elevated fingerboard. Now on a classical guitar, this is really important. Most classical guitars, most actual true classical guitars, not talking about hybrids or anything like that, do not have a cutaway. And so if you are trying to reach some of the upper register on the guitar, you really need to have something that's helping you out, kind of working in your favor from the angle standpoint. And that's what the elevated fingerboard does. By having this bit that goes over the top, it's changing the angle of the neck in relation to the top. And one of the big benefits of that is how you're able to reach over above the 12th fret where the neck joins the body and reach some of the upper register. The other really unique thing about this is what's going on underneath the top. Whether you get the cedar top or the spruce top like this, you are getting a classical guitar with lattice bracing. And that sounds exactly, or it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a lattice of bracing done in a triangle or diamond shape, if you will, that supports the top. Now, here's what's unique about this. If you go back in time to early classical guitar design and how it kind of changed over the years, classical guitar started with ladder bracing. And, you know, some old Gibson flat top guitars had that too. What is ladder bracing? Well, ladder bracing, is, again, kind of what it sounds like. It, is like a ladder or like the rungs of a ladder. You had braces that were running perpendicular to the grain of the wood across the body. Now these are very that's a very strong bracing pattern because you're really supporting against the grain 
uh, because the grain is running vertically, so you've got these horizontal braces supporting that um, and can make for a pretty good sounding guitar. Um, what happened after that, though, is a design that invoked what we call fan bracing, and that's actually what most classical guitars have to this day. Fan bracing is interesting because now the bracing is more delicate. That tends to be smaller, lighter bracing, which is always good for the resonance of an instrument, and they are running somewhat in parallel with the grain, but not entirely parallel, because typically it will radiate out. You'll have multiple braces radiating out on the guitar across the bridge plate um, from the bottom lower bout to the top, providing structural rigidity that's in parallel line with the, uh, the wood, but not entirely because, again, some of those are diagonal. So it's actually crossing multiple lines of grain on the wood. And what you tend to get out of fan bracing is a very full, very rich, uh, loud, you know, guitar with a, a good bit of sustain because the top is moving quite a bit given that they're lighter than typical ladder bracing the top can move a bit more now there's been some various designs of that there's also kind of radiating which is fan bracing that kind of reverses the angle from two different ends usually around the bridge so it's going one way above and below the bridge there's all sorts of different design elements lattice bracing was i guess started in about the 70s around 74 and it's, there's different versions of lattice bracing. Sometimes lattice bracing uh, is just wood, uh, like I believe on this guitar. Sometimes it incorporates carbon fiber. But what you have is you have this network. You have this lattice where you have pieces going back and forth diagonally uh, across the top, creating these small little sections of uh, lattice work that is glued into the top of the guitar. Now, what that does is very interesting because you can imagine that rather than having singular ladder braces or fan braces, a lattice work is extremely strong. It's crisscrossing all over the top of this guitar and really securing that area where the strings anchor to the top with the bridge. Now this is something that we've talked about on this channel before. Heavy bracing can be very detrimental to the sound of a guitar. And if you're making something strong and that's all you're doing, you're actually gonna kill the tone of the instrument. So why doesn't lattice bracing do that? Well, the strength of the bracing allows the bracing to be extremely light. So the fact that you have this crisscrossing network of lattice braces means that those braces can be very delicate, but there's still a lot of strength there. So what else happens? Well, the other thing that you can do is you can make the top thinner. And because the top is now thinner, and the bracing is strong but lighter, you get a lot more resonance and movement. So one of the characteristics of a guitar like this is that you get a lot of resonance and you get a lot of dynamic range. You can play with a very light touch and increase just a little bit and a lot of volume comes out of that. So I'm going to demonstrate this for you, playing a piece that's kind of moving about on the neck and using a lot of dynamic range so you can hear exactly what this guitar is doing thanks to the lattice bracing utilized. Check it out.
So there you have it. Hopefully you were able to hear some of the nuances in my playing to illustrate what this guitar is capable of doing. Now I should say that not everybody is a fan of lattice brace guitars. There's even opinions out there on the guitars that have carbon fiber and the guitars that are just wood versus what you get out of a fan braced guitar. Fan, uh, yeah, fan braced guitar. So what I will say to that is some of that criticism I think is warranted. Uh, based upon how the top responds, and it really comes down to you as a player. Many people have actually likened a fan brace or a lattice brace top to sounding almost banjo like. And that kind of makes sense if you think about the way a banjo works. It's this tight head that's stretched out, there's no bracing whatsoever, and when you pluck a string, it immediately translates and you get a ton of volume, but you don't get very much sustain out of it. So if what you want is a bunch of volume, and you don't really need sustain, you're just trying to be loud with these notes, a banjo's great for what it does. But you would never expect a banjo to have these long, lyrical, sustained lines to it. So I will say fan bracing will give you more sustain, but you lose volume, and your dynamic range is not as great as a result of it. So what works best for you really comes down to the style of playing that you have. I will say, if you haven't ever played classical guitar, if you're a steel string player and you want to kind of dip your toe in it or you want to add that to your arsenal, definitely take time to compare. Now, if you look at Cordoba's lineup in this series, you have a C10 with a spruce top or cedar top and the C12 with a spruce top or cedar top that really give you those two options because the C10 is fan braced, the C12 is lattice braced. If you have the opportunity to compare them at a dealer like Alamo Music, you could play both and understand what your ear likes and what is uh, is best for your particular playing style. Um, I actually really like both. I've owned C10s, I've owned C12s. Uh, I really like the, the response. There's kind of a pop from the C12 that's really great. There's plenty of sustain just because of the, the, the nylon strings and how they're going to vibrate and that warm, that, that rich warmth that you get out of them. And so I never seem to suffer from sustain and this has a lot more volume than I would typically get out of something that would be similar with a different bracing pattern. So, and I also really like the elevated finger uh, fingerboard. If you don't play above the 12th fret on classical, you probably won't benefit from it. But if you, you know, do try to reach up to those notes, it definitely comes in handy and you'll notice it when comparing this to another guitar. So if you'd like any more information about this or other instruments from Cordoba, we have that on our website, alamomusic.com. You can check out all the specs there. You can check out photos. And if you need help, you can chat with someone live and they can help give you some assistance and find the right guitar to suit your needs. Because I always say, really, and this is true, at the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one you're playing. Not the one you're hanging on your wall. It's the one that you're playing. That's what it's all about. That's what playing guitar means. Not collecting, playing guitar. We want to help you do that. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to become an Alamo Music Insider, click the link below, join in on the fun, and I'll see you next time.